Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's January 22nd, 2014, and here's a look at tonight's show. Tonight, has the infamous hacker Guccifer been caught in Romania? Is this the year the machines invade the human workforce in record numbers? And we call Telly Blackwood to talk about his alleged encounter with a TSA rep regarding his contest submission. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. We'll lead off our night with this. Police in Romania are saying that they have caught Guccifer, the legendary hacker who allegedly hacked the likes of Colin Powell and also Tony Blair. They're saying that the suspect's name is Marcel Lehill. He was allegedly contacted in the Romanian city of Arad, and, but we'll give you more information as it develops. Now, LAPD stood down for minutes before TSA's shooting. Now, this is the situation at LAX with the shooting out there. LAPD officers assigned to the area while Paul Ciancia began his shooting spree targeting TSA agent at, agents at LAX airport stood down minutes before the attack began, leaving for breaks without informing their dispatcher as required. Departmental procedures require that officers notify a dispatcher before going on break. So it seems like a whole lot of laxed security at your nation's airport, because not only that, but we showed you the, uh, the stories of the Muslim Brotherhood being able to be waived, just walk straight through TSA security without a screening. And not just this, but when you want to talk about stand downs, we also saw the stand down at the Navy Yard shooting where the SWAT team did not intercept the, uh, the culprit there. So back to the airports, whether it's you know, your, your Navy Yard shootings, whether it's the LAX airport, whatever it is, this notion that the government is always going to be there to protect you is just not true. Because you see this situation, you see the LAX shootings, anything else that's going on, even the shooting, uh, excuse me, not the shooting, but the incident with the underwear bomber, it wasn't the government that stopped that. It was the proactive people on that plane who jumped on the guy and stopped him from, you know, blowing up the plane with his firecracker or, or whatever it was. So just be aware of that, protect yourself, do what you can because the government won't always be there to save you. And speaking of the government not being there to save you, what if the government shows up with excessive force? Utah police obtained grenade launchers, riot gear from feds. Now these police are not to be confused with the ones from North Dakota who use drones to catch cattle thieves. Also not to be confused with the campus police at Ohio State University who use armored cars to, I guess, bust up frat parties. For the past five years, the Pentagon has equipped dozens of Utah police departments with a wide variety of military equipment, commonly used in riot responses such as the aforementioned grenade launchers, M14s, M16s, and mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles. The article goes on. Several of the sheriffs indicated that the equipment would only be used in worst-case scenarios. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better that they're saving their grenade launchers for a worst-case scenario because, as you may recall, one of my first reports when I started working here at InfoWars was about the police in Colorado, Colorado Springs, who used full-on body armor riot gear for the most routine and mundane of calls. So you get a call, you know, some kids out there tagging, uh, tagging the school buses or, or the billboards. You know, send Judge Dredd out there in his full combat gear to bust up these kids and, you know, put them in their place. So at least uh, the police here are saying that they're going to use uh, these in the worst-case scenarios. And I'm not... You know, discounting the fact that these things shoot grenades, because people will say, well, you don't always have to shoot a grenade out of a grenade launcher. You can shoot smoke grenades. You can shoot uh, other type of grenades. They don't always have to be fragment grenades, but I'm not discounting the fact that these things could potentially shoot that type of ordinance, and it does very much concern me. And it concerns me because I see things like this. War zone, open street battles in Kiev as rioters police face off. Riot police brutally dispersed radical protesters from central Kiev and the largest operation since the latest outbreak of violence. Almost 200 officers have been injured over four days of scuffles. Two people were reportedly killed amid the crisis. And this is a preview of what could happen in this country if the economy continues to worsen. Because it's not just economic factors, but the economy definitely played a, played a role in this Kiev incident. But, you know, think about the, all the things that can happen just here in the States because you have the dollar devaluation, you have the fiat currency. So if things get bad enough, if the stuff really hits the fan, how long will it be before America looks like this? And we can get to that situation sooner than we anticipated because now we ask this question. Is 2014 the year that a robot will take your job? The job apocalypse is set to strike as droids are trained to flip burgers. Experts are predicting a job apocalypse. 
as robots take over manual jobs, while scientists at Cambridge warn that machines should have their intelligence limited to stop them from outsmarting us. And it's not just working at the burger joint at McDonald's or Wendy's or any place else. They're also replacing the servicemen. Of course, you know about the drones in the sky. You also have the RoboCod, the COD, the drone of the seas, and also these land walking robots. Uh, straight out of a Star Wars movie being developed by DARPA. So it's all coming to a head. They don't want you. They don't need you in the future. And it's one thing to replace something like Blockbuster with a red box. But do you really want to be serviced by machines, by robots, any place you go? The, uh, the Obama pod at Walmart. And it's not just a Walmart. It's at a bunch of other places. Your robo doctor. You come in. It's going to tell you that you're, you're fat or you're depressed or you're ugly. But we got the thing. Just sign up for Obamacare and everything will be okay. True story. I went to Texas DPS to get my concealed carry license. And I'm thinking because I'm going to the actual place, it won't be a big deal if I walk in. So I walk in, say, hey, I'm here to get my concealed carry. I'd already taken the class. And the guy says, no, you have to go fill out the application online. I'm like, well, this is, this is the place to get the concealed carry. He's like, yeah, but you got to do it online. And I didn't say it to the guy, but I'm thinking, I'm like, well, what are you going to do in like two years when they replace you with a, with a pod? You're going to be the next Obama pod. You're going to be a red box in two years, bro. And, I, and I'm not saying this to down the guy. I really felt bad for this guy that he's not going to have a job. But if you do these things where you, somebody shows up and all you do is say, go fill it out online, then you know what do they need you for? This guy's going to end up on food stamps just like this a record. 20% of households on food stamps in 2013. And it's not just that. The numbers also show that there was a record number of individuals on food stamps in 2013 and that the cost of the program, that being the SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, was at an all-time high. So you have a record number of individuals on food stamps and also the cost steadily rising to be on the program. You know, so, you know, I don't understand why people can't understand that you don't want to be dependent on the government. Ask all the people who were dependent on the government during Hurricane Katrina when they were in the Superdome and waiting for water to be there. Did they enjoy being dependent on the government? But you say that was Bush. OK, what about this current administration, Michelle Obama, trying to tell your kids what they can and cannot eat by her active program or whatever it's called? And the kids at these high schools who are actually in school put out viral YouTube videos. You can find them yourself talking about how they're hungry. Kids are passing out. The jocks are saying they don't have enough to eat to go out and play the football game. It's just a big mess all the way around. So, yeah, that's what you're going to have. You're rationing food if you allow this to continue. So whether it's not having enough food to now having this, pollution from Chinese manufacturing choking U.S. West Coast, billowing across the Pacific Ocean from China and landing on the western shore of the United States are significant quantities of toxic air pollutants, including sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide, and black carbon. Ironically, a great deal of that air pollution is caused by the production of go goods inside of China for export to the United States. So we're basically killing ourselves. Not only that, people are killing themselves in China by not only breathing this, but you go to the Foxconn factories in China, people are jumping off. They had to put suicide nets out there to stop this uh, from going any further. So if you're on the West Coast, you have uh, just the general <laughs> West Coast mentality is the kind of the trendy mentality not every place but we saw that while we were out there but you have the trendy mentality you have this uh this plume of fukushima radiation and you also have this incident with all this toxic air coming over there but of course the government doesn't warn doesn't want to warn you about this meanwhile they're getting their um, getting their preparation for themselves getting their iodine and so forth and they're you know on the low they're out there text testing uh the kelp and the other things out there trying to find out why the starfish are melting and dying. But they don't want to tell you, they don't want to put any signs on these beaches telling you that these beaches have, uh, or at least one of the beaches has radiation levels in excess of 10 times of what's considered normal. They don't want to tell you about that. They don't want to tell you about the eyewitnesses, the people we talked to in Half Moon Bay at Surface Beach who said their friend's hair is falling out and you know people said, I, I can't swim in that water anymore. They don't want to tell you about any of that. They just want you to think everything's fine. Go take your pill and just wait for this thing to quietly kill you. But they have the cure. They have the cure, which is uh, the Obamacare. So when you get sick, just let Uncle Obama know, and he'll take care of it. Now, to take care of something else, we're taking care of business in the form of bitcoins. Now, a couple of casinos in Las Vegas are accepting bitcoins, but you can't use them for gambling, at least yet. So if you're a fan of Bitcoin, just keep an eye on the situation and maybe you can use it one day, not encouraging gambling, just saying that's what the current situation is. And now we'll end tonight with a shocker. Mainstream media is now reporting on non-GMO shopping. 
FDA approved of all of these things. This is saying these are safe, there is no health risk, and these are good to use to improve the food supply. And I don't agree with everything that lady said, but I'm glad that they're at least talking about GMOs on mainstream TV. Now stay tuned because after this break, we'll show you a special report. I went out in the streets and talked to people about the TSA leaving the airport, so you don't want to miss that. And also David Knight will talk to Telly Blackwood, an independent filmmaker, about his encounter, alleged encounter, with a TSA agent who called him on the phone. So stay tuned for both of those. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press. All the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Gropings, detention pods, and x-ray scanners, a few of the things you can experience at your local airport. But how would you feel if these things left the airport and came to meet you? Hi, right, how are you guys doing? How do you guys feel about the security at the airport since 9-11? Oh, we're not interested in talking about it. Okay. But you do know that it's coming outside of the airport, sir, and it's going to have TSA Viper team down the streets and at the Super Bowl? All right. This guy loves the fact that they'll be checking him at the Super Bowl. Uh, he gave me a big thumbs up. It's kind of annoying, it's kind of in annoying. a sense. In what way? Having to get naked, you know what I mean? Having to... Uh, get, the, get the pat downs and all that? Yeah, and having to put your hands in the air and do all that good stuff. Well, you know, at uh, the Super Bowls, they're starting to do pat downs, you know, TSA style pat downs when you go into the, these big events. These say travel light because there will be well, numerous checkpoints event, throughout so the entire week. not going to bother week. me. I'll be watching it from my uh, sofa at home. I don't really like to go to big events like that for those particular reasons because I'm scared something, that's a lot of people, you know what I mean? So anything can happen with all those people there. How do you guys feel about the security at the airport since 9-11? It's getting more friendly with TSA PreCheck. And you, sir? Uh, yeah, I agree. I'm a frequent traveler. I'm TSA pre-check, so it doesn't really affect me too much. They have TSA Viper teams. They're going to be checking bus terminals and airports. Some areas, they're already doing this. I don't know. I might feel safer, actually. They check bus terminals and also uh, train stations. No, but I got to go. Okay. Thank you, sir. You go to the mall? I do. Okay. Sometimes. So would you be willing to t accept anything that goes on here to get inside the mall? Uh, no. 